Okay, so I'm gonna try and do a super quick and as succinct as I can breakdown of the gear here. To begin, the general interaction comes from the fact that Sackwall's Talons gives us Aspect of the Avian. Aspect of the Avian flits between two modes, Flight and Might, by default every four seconds. However, we use Sackwall's Winds and Sackwall's Talons to lower that to as close to every two seconds as we can by reducing the duration. Sackwall's Flock gives us the Tornado skill, which triggers every time the two flip-flop back and forth. So the faster you can get them to flip-flop, the more tornadoes per second you get. The way we achieve this is by stacking skill effect duration reduction. Our primary sources of that come from the Awakened Swift Affliction support, and less duration support we have in the boots, which affect Aspect of the Avian, lowering it quite a bit. We also can get upwards to another 10% reduction each from Time Twists, 15% from Warp Time Pieces that got buffed in the recent patch, and finally we can get another 25% reduction on the tree from the Window of Opportunity cluster. Once you have everything combined and you get all the pieces together, you're going to be casting 7.5 times per second. Next up, we're basically going with a pretty typical assassin poison uh, approach. So we are stacking awakened unbound ailments, vile toxins, and deadly ailments on our tornado skill, as well as greater multiple projectiles, which turns our one tornado into five tornadoes in a nova. Now, by default, typically the tornadoes will not shotgun, but it seems that they do kind of shotgun if you bounce them off of a wall. So your key is to get the enemy between you and a wall and pass the tornado through them, bounce it off the wall and through them a second time. This will effectively double your amount of hits. Our primary weapon of choice is Disintegrator. Tornado has kind of a low base damage, but a really high hit rate. It really benefits a lot from that massive amount of flat added fizz that Disintegrator gives us. Disintegrator also gives us a pretty respectable amount of non-chaos gained as chaos. Tornado is a pure fizz spell, so it really gains uh, a decent amount from chaos conversion. Um, other than that, we get our resists from our belt. We do not have much desire for sockets as we already get all our damage from our five link up here. So we don't really need a six link body. So Callum's heart gives us a tremendous amount of life which makes up for the fact that we have very little life on almost all of our sockets. So most of your life is going to come from your belt and your body. On the tree, to make up for the fact that we have almost no resists, we are using three grand spectrums. These will give us 21% to all resists per jewel, and we can get three of them, so that's 63 resists right there. We also are taking the sentinel cluster with the resists here. This serves a useful purpose in the future once you can afford it. You can put Green Nightmare in here and take advantage of this fat resist cluster. Green Nightmare will give us Frenzy Charge on kill, as well as a fat amount of dodge chance. Finally, we use Inertia over here in this spot, which gives us a tremendous amount of strength, which helps make it a lot easier to equip Count's Heart. And finally, a Watcher's Eye. We do not use Coralitos as a flask, because we already path right next to Perfect Agony, so we just take it. Not having to use Coralitos allows us to use a normal Diamond Flask, which allows us to put some form of immunity or utility effect on it. So I took of Curing, so my Diamond Flask gives me Poison Immunity. Um, in a way, it's kind of amusingly the opposite of a Coralitos. Our other utility flask we use is a Quartz Flask, which is really key. Uh, though we use Withering Step, um, which is nice and all, and gives us a few moments of phasing. Because we're stacking a massive amount of skill reduction, uh, the phasing on Withering Step doesn't last very long. And we want to actually disable that as fast as possible by using another skill as soon as we pop Withering Step to get it back on cooldown again. This allows us to constantly spam it and keep our elusive bonus above 120%. So we have permanent super jacked elusive. So instead, we need another source of phasing. We get our primary source of phasing then from the Quartz Flask, which allows us to pass through crowds and kind of go at max speed without being hindered by getting, you know, stuck in a corner or whatever. Our final other flask is Witchfire Blue, which gives us, of course, uh, the Despair Curse Aura and increased damage over time, which is nice. Uh, the Smoke Cloud is also great for inflicting blind on bosses. Other than that, Life Flask and Quicksilver Flask. For our auras, we are using Herald of Agony, of course, which gives us a fat more bonus, and Vitality. Now, normally, Vitality, not a super great skill. 
um, does not provide a big bonus considering it takes 35% mana reservation. However, the key to this build and the way we stay alive is our Watcher's Eye has the Vitality mod Life Gain on hit. This build has a tremendous amount of hits per second. If you can get the enemy sandwiched between you and a wall, you can hit upwards to 100 times per second, which makes that 25 to 30 life gain on hit upwards to 2.5 to 3,000 life per second. It is a ridiculous amount of sustain. Now moving on to our skills. Our primary utility skills are Plague Bearer, which gives us a huge amount of clear and damage, Withering Step as previously discussed, and Lightning War. Lightning Warp benefits a lot from the fact that we're stacking skill effect duration reduction. Uh, at level 20, it will have capped reduction, so it effectively casts instantly. Aside from that, we're just stacking in power support, which super jacks Plague Bearer and helps with Withering Step. And we have a full mana reservation, so we need to use Blood Magic. The only alternative to Blood Magic is having to take some mana reservation reduction on the tree which cuts into our defenses and offenses that we want to spend elsewhere on the tree. So instead, we just slap Blood Rip Magic on our six link here, and that makes it basically trivial to cast our various utility skills. Our four link is a cast when damage taken setup using Purifying Flame and a Mortal Call. Mortal Call gives us defensive layer. That's a nice little, uh, you know, buff in a pinch. And Purifying Flame gives us 6% life regen from the Consecrated Ground it creates. If you can manage to get the Consecrated Ground enchantment on your gloves, uh, you can drop Purifying Flame and slip to something a little bit more useful, like perhaps Frost Bomb, or perhaps remove this whole setup for something like Wither Totems. 